think it's been a positive thing for both ball clubs tonight. And it's a shame that one of them has to lose. Cooper will inbound the ball. Johnson over Parrish. He hits it! The Lakers win! The NBA rivalry between the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers is referred to as the Celtics-Lakers rivalry. The Celtics and Lakers have met in the NBA Finals a record 12 times since their first meeting in 1959. They would go on to dominate the league in the 1960s and 1980s after meeting six times in the 1960s, three times in the 1980s, and twice in 2008 and 2010. More 1962 NBA Finals Game 7. Celtics-Lakers. It was actually the first finals to go seven games between these two. Bill Russell had 30 points and 40 boards. Oh, my God. Down two. Lakers had the ball. 18 seconds left. James Worthy. Cross-court pass. Stolen by Gerald Henderson. He would make the layup and tie the game, and it sent it to overtime. Sees would outscore the Lakers 11-8 in overtime to tie the series at one apiece. Games to one. Kurt Rambis is going in for a layup and then was close locked <laughs> by Kevin <laughs> McHale. Anything's possible. Anything's possible! The Lakers and Celtics are tied for the NBA record with 17 titles apiece. They are responsible for the 34 of the 74 NBA championships, and only Boston has an overall winning record against the Lakers. This is the full story of the rivalry between the two most successful franchises in NBA history. The Boston Celtics under Red Auerbach began their ascent to greatness. Auerbach transformed the Celtics into an absolute powerhouse of a franchise. With an emphasis on teamwork, discipline, and relentless defense, Auerbach instilled a winning culture that would define the Celtics for generations to come. The Seas dominated the NBA landscape of the 1950s and 60s, capturing championship after championship with remarkable consistency. Casey Jones. Casey holding the ball. That's it. The game is over. And John Havlicek is running for his life. And Bill Russell. Eight straight World Championships certainly is a... Unbelievable feat. Meanwhile, on the opposite coast, the LA Lakers were also forging their own path to greatness. Founded in 1947 as the Minneapolis Lakers before relocating to Los Angeles in the 1960s, the Lakers quickly established themselves as a perennial contenders in the Western Conference. However, the Lakers struggled to overcome the dominance of the Celtics in the NBA Finals. Year after year, the Lakers found themselves losing to the Celtics, which is how this whole thing all started. During the late 1950s and throughout the 1960s, the NBA landscape was dominated by the Celtics, and that was still because of Bill Russell. This man was the heart and soul of the entire Celtics dynasty. Russell covers an incredible area of the court. Look at that big man move. He has all the tools. Quick hands. Fine balance. Russell, of course, gets the rebounds and starts that fast break. Celtics lead 43-39. Russell. That was a big basket by Russell. His defensive skills were on full display in the 1962 NBA Finals, where he faced off against Lakers superstar Jerry West, who is actually now the NBA logo. The 1962 NBA Finals series went the distance, ending in a thrilling Game 7 that would be remembered forever. Both players led their team in almost every category. However, in the end, it was the Celtics who won, getting their fourth consecutive NBA championship. Among all our colleagues has been the 60s and the rivalry between Bill Russell and Jerry West. It made basketball basketball and it made it very exciting. Russell was a defensive master and was a cornerstone of the Celtics dynasty back then. West was a star shooting guard and a longtime Laker as everybody knows. I gotta say the rivalry really came about during all their battles together. You know, Jerry West always had a difficult time when he faced the Boston Celtics, and that's because of the defensive presence of Bill Russell. Everything comes down to who won what and how many wins. Russell is known as the greatest winner in all of basketball, and, uh, and that's not, you know, really a subjective statement. Uh, he really was a dominant player at the time. And um, Jerry West, of course, he's the logo of the NBA. But remember this, not a lot of people know this unless you look up the stats. Jerry West played in nine NBA finals and he lost eight of them. That means he was the worst NBA finals record of all time at one and eight. And a whopping six losses were at the hands of Mr. Bill Russell and the mighty Celtics. 
the rivalry, yeah. I mean, we you know we had it against Magic and Jordan. Uh, you know, um, it, it, you know, out of the two best, greatest players of all time, um, and then you, of course Magic and um, of course Larry Bird. Uh, but these two in the '60s really made basketball more popular, and um, and really started the trend, you know, of a man-to-man game. And yes, I was honored to have caught them both at some of these games. The rivalry had a new age in the 1980s, which was between the Showtime Lakers and the Boston Celtics' Big Three. Led by Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the Lakers had an insanely fast offense, which earned them multiple trips to the NBA Finals. Meanwhile, of course, the Celtics had to match them by creating a strong Big Three of Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and Robert Parrish. They relied on precision passing and a tough defense to dominate, which led to an NBA Finals matchup between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Celtics again. Their historic first meeting awaited. And at the LA Forum, both spectacular rookies were primed for the challenge. As Bird's uncanny shot-making ability was countered by Johnson's dazzling floor leadership. Round one went to Magic, and this breathtaking show marked the inception of a decade of classic NBA showdowns. This game meant a lot to everybody, not just me and, and uh, Magic probably, but uh, you know, this is the first shot they had all year, and they wanted to look good in front of the crowd, and they did. So uh, you know, we're just looking for a rematch now. Later that season, Johnson would travel to the unfamiliar confines of Boston Garden and enter Bird's domain. I'm very excited about uh, the big crowd and about being here in Boston for my first time. It's going to be a big game, a lot of enthusiasm throughout the crowd, and uh, I just hope the best team wins today. Though Bird would go on to become Rookie of the Year, the game and eventually the title would belong to Magic's Lakers. We go head to head and uh, we go for blood almost. You know, it's just, we're so competitive, and um, I just tell them a good game and I just smile a little bit. Oh boy, I mean... I'd say my family's pretty diehard Lakers fans. Uh, growing up, I bet you yeah, I went to a game before I walked. I've got the Vlade Divac warm-up suit in my closet that's been my Halloween go-to costume. Uh, I love Derek Fisher. You can't forget about Derek Fisher. I remember listening to his game-winning shot in my mom's Toyota when I was like six years old. But yeah, we're a huge Lakers family. I'm a huge Lakers fan, but I think I've taken it a bit too far now. My favorite color is green, and it irks me. My own favorite color irks me because of the Boston Celtics. I hate that little leprechaun. I hate that city. I hate the East Coast. Everyone knows the West Coast is the best coast. I don't like Jason Tatum. I can't tell you another player on that horrible roster. And don't even get me started on Larry Bird. Who cares about Larry Bird? What did he do? I don't know, corn country? I just, you don't care about Larry Bird or the Celtics. I don't want to see any Celtics in my city. Get the green out of here. In 1984, the Celtics and Lakers renewed the rivalry in the NBA Finals, marking the beginning of a new chapter in their storied history. This series was filled with a lot of drama and intensity, but the Celtics won again in seven games, capturing their 15th championship and adding another chapter to their legendary rivalry. was the Magic Johnson versus Larry Bird rivalry as both Magic led the Lakers to five NBA championships, Larry Bird led the Celtics to three, and these two were pinned against each other in every single category on and off the court. This is still regarded as one of the best player on player rivalries in history. I don't know who did this. The basketball gods shine down on us. You end up with Boston, I end up in LA. We went on to win many championships. Tell me your experience in Boston. How was that experience? Well, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I grew up in Boston. I was very fortunate to go to a small school where I felt comfortable. I love the city of Terre Haute, but once I left, I was nervous about uh, getting out there, getting settled. But once I got settled in and, and got to know my way around a little bit in Boston, uh, I knew it was a perfect fit for me. And knowing you was on the West Coast, I was on the East Coast, um, I was just dreaming about another chance I, maybe I'd get to play against you. In the early 2000s, 
2000s, the LA Lakers emerged as a dominant force in the Western Conference, led by the duo of Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, where they added three championships to the Lakers' name. To counter them, the Boston Celtics created another new Big Three consisting of Paul Pierce, The Truth, Kevin Garnett, and Ray Allen. Pierce, the Celtics' longtime captain and scoring leader, was joined by Garnett, a defensive anchor and a fierce competitor, and Allen is one of the greatest three-point shooters in NBA history. It wasn't until 2008 when these teams met again. However, Shaq and Kobe had a fallout as Shaq left for Miami years before, so he was not a part of this great rivalry. In this year, the Celtics won in six games, capturing their 17th championship. But then, Kobe and the Lakers got their revenge just two years later in 2010, beating the same Celtics team, which won the Lakers their 16th championship. That's a three. Miami! The Lakers repeat back to that titles. The LA Lakers, the 2010 NBA champions. At this current point in time, the Lakers had 16 chips, while the Celtics had 17. 2008 was honestly one of the best years of my life watching four Hall of Famers in my opinion, Bajan Rondo, Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, and Paul Pierce on the same team. But then 2010 came, Kobe kind of stopped us from getting better at team. None of these two teams have played each other in the finals since 2010. However, the Lakers tied the Celtics with a finals victory in 2020, which tied for the Celtics for 17 championships each. And that's it, it's over. This historic 2020 NBA championship belongs to the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers conquer the bubble, and banner number 17 will soon hang in the rafters. But this year we have a chance to beat the Lakers to get our 18th banner. And with us both being the playoffs, I don't think the Lakers stand a chance. The Lakers are an eight seed, and we're the one seed in the East. We won over 60 games this year, so I just want us to get better at team before the Lakers do, and I know that's gonna happen. Now in 2024, both teams have a very high likelihood of meeting once again, as fans have been begging for a finals rematch ever since 2010. The race to Banner 17 is on.